Hey everybody, it's Imran, and I'm here for our weekly chat to where every Wednesday I um, <clears throat> let you know what's going on with the health stuff and just kind of updating everybody so that way everybody knows where we're at. Today is Wednesday, the 28th of November, and it's really late. I'm exhausted, but I thought I would do an update since I didn't do one uh, this week. I'm here with my Earl Grey tea that I put some milk into, and I'm going to uh, drink this and probably fall asleep on the couch like I have the last three weeks. Um, wanted to let you know what's happening in my life over the last couple of weeks. Um, well, actually, since the last update that, that Tamara and I talked. Um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, we know that that's what it is. They know that that's what the cancer is. And um, it's just a more of a lot of, uh, of prep work right now at this point. So it's a lot of um, doing tests and making sure that it didn't go any further than the stage that it's currently in and those types of things. So uh, starting tomorrow, for example, I'm doing what's called an echo heart test where they check my body to see what my heart rate will react to with some of the medication or seeing if I'm having any abnormalities on my heart. Um, and uh, then next week is the is the tough bone marrow biopsy, and then also a PET scan, which is the one that they check my body radioactively to see if there's any kind of spreading of the cancer besides where they already know. The reason for these is not for any reason other than to make sure that uh, they, we don't miss anything. And um, I said, sure, test me all you need to in order for me to uh, make sure that we get this the first time uh, with the best way. So I, <clears throat> I didn't really know what I wanted to talk about tonight because uh, last week we had Tamara on the video and it helped me because we were able to talk about things. But what I did was I took about five or six questions that people have been asking me and I thought I would um, share them with you so that way I could give you the answers of what's going on uh, with me. And by the way, uh, I still do have hair. I'm not, nothing's happening yet. I'm just wearing this because it's like 20 degrees in the beach cities right now. Um, how am I feeling is a question that I'm mainly getting a lot. How am I feeling? Uh, I feel pretty good. I'm encouraged. I feel good. I'm strong. I'm getting a lot of letters like this uh, really cool letter that or card that I got from CAR Leadership that I think I, I, I shared with you guys on Facebook yesterday. That kind of stuff lifts my spirits up. I feel very good about it. And um, really cool. I'm excited about that. As far as the health is concerned, well, let me tell you some of the changes in my body that's been happening since, since the, the cancer was there. Um, I'm having a little trouble with my breathing um, because the masses in my chest are pushing up against my lungs. It's not in my lungs, but it's pushing up against it. So things like a brisk walk or even um, walking and talking at the same time is is difficult because I, I have problems uh, catching my breath with that. And that's a challenge, especially with a on the go kind of guy like myself, it's been difficult. Um, a couple of days ago, I, I ran to go get something. And by the time that I reached there, it was probably no more than 50 steps. I was pretty out of breath. So um, I'm anxious to get this crap out of my body and then uh, go back to the usual run to the donut shop to go get some more Krispy Kreme kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. I'm changing my diet. Um, I'm also feeling a, a pain in my back. And so it's scary to do research on something that you know that you have. So whether it be cancer or any other kind of disease, it's difficult to sit there and read it on the internet because um, you hear about all about the negativity and the positivity. It's difficult to, to sit there and just analyze your own stuff. But I've been doing that, trying to get a feel for what I'm in store for. And one of the things they talk about is back pain. And it has a lot to do with your, with your nervous system and how the cancer affects it. And uh, I'm not having back pain in my lower back. It's more of my upper back. And the, and the normal thing is to have it in your lower back. But it's happening right in between my uh, shoulder blades. It's very painful. It feels like, um, I explained it to Tamara yesterday, it feels like somebody honestly just took a big sharp object and just stuck me in the back with it. Not figuratively, but literally that's how it feels. And uh, it's very painful and um, I don't know what to do about it just yet, but um, hey, 
whatever. We'll get through this. Um, am I still? Here's another question. Am I still experiencing numbness in my limbs? Here's the crazy thing about it. So everybody's telling me that they're praying for me. Well, not everybody, but the people that tell me that they're praying for me. There's there's lots of them. And uh, I am not feeling any numbness in my arm. Uh, a little bit when maybe I sleep on it or if I, um, if I lay down and like my neck is up against the, the tumor and pushing down on my nerve. But remember how I was explaining a couple weeks ago where I was having numbness and I couldn't open my hands at some times and I could touch it but I didn't feel it. Those are starting to go away. I don't know why, but that's a good sign I'm hoping. And uh, maybe the prayers are coming um, together and, and helping me with this, but I can't really explain why. Um, but, but look, everything's fine. It's feel, I feel okay. Um, are, <laughs> here's a tough question. Are you scared? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of scared. Uh, but I've been, I've been getting some really cool feedback from people that I know and I don't know. I've had so many people reach out to me and I look at their story and they don't know who I am and they'll reach out to me on Facebook and they'll say, hey, listen, I know that this is what you're going through, but look it, I'm going through this right now. I'm powering through this. You're going to get through it too. They kind of warn me about the symptoms. And again, this is um, the second time I've been through cancer, but this one's a little bit different, like a lot more severe. Um, but, but this time around, it, it feels... I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I, I will not lie to you there, but I, I'm strong-willed. I'm going to beat this. And um, and there's lots to be scared about. I think that the scariest part about this whole thing was not knowing what was going to happen. I, mean, I think that whenever you hear the words cancer, you think of sick and and skinny and laying in bed all day and bald. And, and there are many, many people that are currently living with cancer and chemo, going through chemotherapy and beating this every day. And they're not sick and, you know, bone thin. They're not like that. Um, medicine has come a very long way. Even since 2007 when I last was diagnosed with cancer, this has really come around. And um, many people right now go to work and have a reg regular normal life uh, while going through chemotherapy. And I'll go into a little bit of that in just a, a few minutes. I always try to keep these under about 12 minutes, so you've got five more minutes of this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm scared. Um, the, the main thing is, is that I have trouble sleeping. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I live by myself and it's difficult because at nighttime, the boogeyman or whatever you want to call it comes out, but really it's the negative thoughts come out. And it scares me and it freaks me out and I think about the worst. So. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that the doctor gave me an anti-anxiety medication because I was having trouble breathing. It felt like, with the covers, felt like, imagine a wet, hot blanket over your face. That's what it felt like to me because <clears throat> I was just having such anxiety problems. But, but I'm getting better. I think that um, I just stay up until I'm completely exhausted and then I fall asleep. No problem. Um, don't worry, I'll, I'll fix that. But it's getting better. Every day it's getting better. If all goes as planned, when do you expect to be cancer free? That's a really good question. Well, let me give you my schedule of what I know is going to happen. I am starting chemotherapy uh, on December 14th. That is a Friday. Um, the, the, the therapy that I'm going through is the most common chemotherapy treatment. It's called ABVD. And what that is, is a, a, a abbreviations for all these different drugs that they put in my body. What happens is I'm going to the the cancer care center in Redondo Beach and uh, going for an IV treatment on Friday the 14th. I lay in the hospital. They give me the IV treatment through the arm for about two hours and then I go home. And of course, you know, Tamara's going to be there um, the whole time, which is helpful for me um, because I, I can't drive. And um, based on everything that I've said, the doctor says that I'm going to kind of feel like shit for two days. And then after that, um, I can kind of have a regular life. Um, some people describe it as feeling kind of fluish. Some people say, I don't really have much at all. I got kind of a tummy ache and I move on. I think everybody's body is different, so everybody reacts to it. So the, the suggestions of what it might be for me like, what it might be for me like, what it might be like for me, um, who knows yet? 
my body may react very differently to other people. Um, but it's expected that within two weeks after um, I start the chemotherapy that I'm going to start losing my hair. Believe me, I'm not going to go through that drama. I'm shaving my head in the next week or so. So uh, the, I'm just not going to have that happen because it's just too drastic to go from spiky pointy faux hawk hair emerin to bald and patchy emerin. So I'm just going to shave it all and, and get it all over with uh, early. Um, and so the cycles go like this. December 14th, I go in. Uh, December 28th, I go in. The January 11th, I go in. January 25th, I go in. February 8th, I go in. And February 22nd, I go in. Now that's three total cycles that, that I do the chemotherapy. And um, there might be a fourth. I think it'll be three because I'm a tough dude and that's going to be out of me soon. Uh, by February 22nd, what they'll do then is after that last treatment for two weeks, so coming up on the first week of March, they would probably, if that's the case and I go three cycles, uh, they'll probably run um, they'll run a scan to see how far along the, the tumor killing has gone. And the great thing about it is, like I'd mentioned on my last video, that the tumors are, I can feel them. So what happens is I can feel them going down. And that's the great thing about it while I'm going through this process. Um, after that, uh, radiation is going to begin, and I believe I'm going to have radiation for about 30 days. So it's five days straight, Monday through Friday. I'm going to be doing radiation in um, Santa Monica at the UCLA Med Center uh, with Dr. Christopher King. I've already set that up. So right after my <clears throat> chemotherapy, um, I'm going to go through the radiation, and that's a that's an everyday type thing. So um, I've been through radiation, no big deal, I can handle that. And um, if all goes well, all goes well, I should be cancer-free June 1st. And that's an exciting time for me. Uh, I've had a couple of people say, hey, if you're going to be cancer-free on a certain time, why not set up a party to where you're going to have your Emerin Kick Cancer's ass party? And that'd be kind of fun. I think that'd be great and it'd be something to, to kind of rally around and have friends and family there and, and that kind of a thing. So, um Look out for the invitations. They might come out soon. Um, but also I want to say that, you know, I love working for my company, Harcourt's Real Estate, here in the United States. And I got involved in this company by going to Australia and New Zealand as a speaker earlier this year in May. And um, damn it, I'm going to be there in May uh, in Australia and New Zealand for the conferences again. This time as a member of Harcourt's and the corporate team, and also as a cancer survivor. So I will be there, I promise. And we will be there, and we will be there to support our friends and see all of our um, colleagues. And uh, I might be bald, but I'll still be beautiful. And I will be there. I, I promise that. And uh, and that's what where we're at. Um, last question. What do you say to somebody that's going through cancer right now? And that came from somebody who is currently um, related to, not currently related, they are related to somebody who's currently going through cancer. And this is what I would say to you. Um, the hardest part about all this is not knowing. It's the fear of it. And once you know what you're doing, you come up with a game plan and you come up with a, a, a way that you're going to beat this. And you come, you work with your doctors and you, and you um, find out information, true information, not internet crap, but true information about what you've got to go through, how you got to help have your body healthy, how do you prepare for all of this? And these are the kinds of things that I've done to prepare myself. So I'm, a, I'm just like, let's do this. Let's get this over with. I'm ready to do it. And I'm excited about it. So that way I can get this crap out of my body and we can move on with, with my life. And uh, I can go help other people that are going through this. And right now, today, uh, so there's, a, there's a young lady that works at a Keller Williams in Northern California. And she is going to go to her, her chemotherapy for the very first time tomorrow morning. And she had reached out to me on Facebook and said, Emron, I'm, I'm really scared. And I told her, and I, I, I'm not going to say her name, but she's a Keller Williams agent in Northern California. And she says, um, I said to her, let's just beat it. Let's just beat it. You know, it's, you'll, make, you'll feel a little bit sick. You'll feel a little bit kind of woozy, 
but it means that you're going to get better in the long run. And I'm excited about that. And I hope you're watching um, Miss KW person who knows who she is. I hope you're watching and I just want to let you know that you're going to be just fine. Just like I'm just going to be fine as well. Um, that's the update for this week. 15 minutes and 14 seconds. I don't know if that's going to work. Hopefully I can upload it and it works for you guys. Have a great week. And uh, many of you may know I'm flying to, to Northern California tomorrow to be there at our installation luncheon for the new president of our uh, Central Valley Association of Realtors, Patrick Wallace. So I'm going to be there for that and um, seeing all old colleagues and saying hi to everybody. And I'm excited about that. So I will see you guys next week. Talk to you soon.